I want to show you a number of ways Eclipse makes PHP programming easier. Let's make a new file. New PHP file. Call it uh, test. And first of all, if you type a variable name, first name equals Jim, for instance, and then you want to say that you want to show that name for, you just start typing the variable and it appears. You press enter and the whole thing pops in which is very useful. What is also very useful is if you are in a 300 line program or if you have 300 different files in your project and you're on a variable and you want to know where that variable was defined, you go to it with your cursor, press F3, and it hops back. Which is not too amazing when you're on the same page, but if you're way down here and you press F3, you hop all, all the way back. And that happens even if you're in a different file, for instance. So another reason why people or why PHP programmers choose Eclipse for PHP projects is the documentation. Let me give you an example of this. Let's say you have a class called Smart URL, for instance. And in this, you have a public function display and display has a kind variable the kind is default normal for instance and it returns let's just do a test here some kind of url for instance test php id equals 234 so you have that kind of thing now the way you document this is you press slash star star enter and it asks you for the name of the class. And you say, this is a class that abstracts a URL, for instance. And then you can also do the same thing for the function or the method, slash star star enter. And you have all kinds of things to fill in now. This displays the contents of the smart URL, whatever. The type. You say here, okay, the parameter is a string. So you type that, the string is kind. And then you can say things about it. Should be normal or advanced, whatever. This is just a test. Return, what does it return? It returns a string. And all of this is very important information. By the way, this information can later be automatically put into documentation, which is one reason why you do it like that. Another reason is this. Inside of Eclipse, you create a smart URL equals new smart. You just start typing. After you type SM control space, and it already pops in the only class it knows that starts with SM, which is very useful. And then you can type, uh, we don't have anything there. Okay, now we say smart uh, echo smart URL. As soon as we begin typing a method, not only do all of the methods of the class pop up in code assist but also information about them that we can use at this point so if i choose this one hit enter it also has information here of what kind of variable i need to type in there so i can type in normal for instance or advanced it doesn't matter so that is an example of the code assist documentation features that eclipse has the F3 that I mentioned earlier also works for these. For instance, if you're on display here and you press F3, chink, then you go automatically to that point. This also works for include files. Let's say we have a file called library. And inside the library, we have a class called string helper. And inside there, we have uh, public static function, uppercase, for instance, and you have the line return string to upper of line. Okay, for instance. So this is our library back here. We include it, require once library PHP. Okay, so now that's included. Now the great thing about Eclipse's code assist is it also looks in our libraries or in our <laughs> included files. So it will look in our library. Here we go. If I say, okay, I want to show uh, what was the name of that class and the methods in it, I can type at this point control space and I get a list of everything I have access to at that point control space. If I start to type S 
T. There it is, string helper. That's the name of it. I hit enter. And here it's asking me for a method. I do control space. And since it only has one method, it just pops it in for me. And it says that I need to type in a line. So I type in some kind of text, whatever. But you can see how it then pops in the information that I need at that point. This F3 also works for libraries. So if I'm here and I want to go to where I define this method, I press F3 at this point and I pop into the other file at that point. And that's a very useful feature when you're working with hundreds of files and hundreds of classes and that kind of thing. So you can go to the point where something is defined. Next feature is, let's say you copy in a whole bunch of code and your code, you know, let's say you copied in another method here. like this display two okay but when you copied it in it was over here on the side for instance i'm doing shift tab that's a, another nice feature tab 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 shift tab shift tab shift tab shift tab shift tab shift tab let's say things are very messed up with control shift f everything aligns again i use that quite often control shift f aligns your text where it's supposed to be with all the proper indentation another very nice feature is when you want to look up for instance, a PHP function like string to upper, put your cursor on it and press shift F2. It'll open up a new tab, go online to the PHP documentation and look up your function. And here you have the information on the function plus examples and a discussion from various people who have talked about that function. I use that quite a bit. The feature is as you're typing along, you might find things that you want to fix later or that you want to do later. So let's say here you want to do make a new function here or whatever. And you save your file. If you go down here into tasks, you see that your to do has been added because you have slash slash to do colon here. If we put another one down here, to do change the name of this, whatever, save, it pops in there. Even if you're in another file, to do, change this from line to content or whatever, save, and you see that it pops in. All of my to-dos are in one place, no matter where they are in what file in my project, which is quite useful. Another code word that works is fix me. This doesn't work if the value is zero or whatever. Save. And you get the to-do in your list, but it has a nice little red exclamation point by it so that you know to do it first, for instance. So fix me is more urgent. And those are nice little things. And actually, programmers that I know actually use these, so they can be useful.